Hi there, um, my name is Steve Jones. Um, some of you may remember me, I did a lot of videos on AROS in the past. Um, if you look through this channel, go back two or three years, you'll see there's a whole load of AROS stuff I, I um, did in the past. Um, I'm starting to do a few more now to show where we are at the moment. Um, and they're going to start off with this almost like a recap. Um, so this video is uh, showing three builds. Um, this is more about the hardware than the software. It's not. Um, it's not a, a, um, a, a tutorial on Icarus or AROS or anything like that. But it's experiences in building a machine. Um, uh, for example, I have a laptop, um, which I actually funded all the drivers, which is part of the Amica project. Um, I funded the drivers for that, which I'll give some at the end of this video. I'll explain all that. Um, and there was a, a PC that was given to me by a friend who. Who's sadly his his um, his mother had died, um, and it was going to go into the skip, um, and so he said if I wanted it, and so I built a machine based on that, and I'll, I show you the how it was working originally, how I upgraded it uh, for very little money to make it into a really usable little machine. The third one is uh, an old um, tower computer I had up in the loft, um, and the bits I've done with that took some bits and pieces I already had, stuck it in. Etc. So hopefully you can pick up some knowledge from that. Um, there'll be a summary at the end how, where I think AWOS is and where I think it should go at the end of this. Um, but then the following videos uh, are going to be okay. Let's build something cheap for AWOS that can outperform anything by any of the next generation machines. So um, that's it. Uh, hopefully you're going to like this video, um, and um, I will be doing more. Um, if you've got any comments, put them down below. Um, keep in touch, you'll probably see me around on AWOS Exec, um, I'm not as uh, frequently there as I used to be, um, but I do now intend starting again with my development support. So if you're developing AWOS, get in touch. Alright, cheers, thanks a lot. Okay, so um, <clears throat> about, oh, I don't know, two or three years, maybe four years ago, um, I decided I wanted to create a laptop for AWOS. Um, and basically what this would mean is find the suitable laptop um, and then uh, getting the drivers written. Uh, it's made sense to me that to do the um, Atom processors because they were in loads and loads of these little netbooks and this is an example of one here um, which is called the Acer Aspire. It's actually got a bigger battery on this one but um, it's an Acer Aspire and it's a fantastic little laptop. Um, uh, so, let's open it up so you can see it. Uh, just, let's just make this a little bit more. There we go. And what I'll let me, okay, right, so let's turn it on. So basically what it needed was, it needed um, graphics drivers, it needed sound drivers, it needed a network driver. Um, now I'd actually had, I'd actually um, uh, encouraged, paid, whatever you want to call it, um, uh, Nick to um, Nick Andrews to write the network driver a little while before, so it was already supported. Um, and I contacted um, David Wetzler, um, who created the AHI driver, which later I sold to the AROS community, basically to recoup the money I'd spent on it. And they they raised the money, and I and because I, I wanted to go public to make anyway, but I'd spent quite a lot of money on it. Um, that supported HD audio, which is quite a big system actually. Um, and then <clears throat> Michael Schultz, uh, it took him a little while to do it, but he finally f created an absolutely amazing graphics driver for the um, the GMA chip inside the Atoms. I think it's a 900 series. Um, so any 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 little device that's got an Atom processor with the GMA device on it. Uh, 900, I think 950 um, will do what you're about to see. Um, now I, I'm, I've got it running on here in the netbook, but of course um, it's it's quite hard to see. Uh, you can see we've also got because of the um, the work that that was done, it obviously inherits the, uh, the 3D graphics. So and and whilst the the Atom's not got the best 3D engine in the world. 
um, it, it can actually do some some quite nice things so um, it is actually quite quite cool in fact if I open up a couple of these little demos on this um, display I'm gonna now I'm gonna put in a second that I'm, there's a big monitor behind you can probably see um, yeah let's just run that up send that to the back and you can see this is running quite oh I've got um, haven't got it set to the, full, the proper screen have I anyway let me just stretch this out a bit there you go I and mean, that's it's got a nice little 3d engine inside it and it works really well um, it's not the highest performance as I said before and, and and the games I'm showing you on the other systems won't run on this um, but it, it's there and it can do some basic 3d stuff and it, and, it, and, it, and it does work nice I you know I mean I'll give an example here gearbox yes let's do that yeah, so and that's right it's just lovely you know so basic 3d yes I know let me put that in front that's running really nice so you know that, that that's pretty cool um, and of course then we come back to we could do all the other things on it oh, let me just close some of this down. it's actually quite hard to do it on this this um, this little laptop now you got your all your different bits and pieces so what I can do is also I can let's quit that let's load up Janus UAE here we go let me get it to focus. <laughs> uh, now, so that's that's loading now. It's got the um, the emulator running. Let's see if I can find the emulator panel. There it is, and I'll pop a disk into it. What we got here? Demos. I might run this in the full screen, to be honest. But. Quite good fun seeing it because it, it does actually work on here, and you can you can actually run it. Now, bear in mind this is an Atom, okay, so, which is not particularly the fastest um, little CPU, but it's, it was meant to be low, low, you know, low low power consumption. It was Intel's attempt at trying to compete with the ARM dominance, which they're still trying to this day. Um, here we go. So now again, this is running 68k now. The Atom processor will run uh, OCS and ECS software, no problem at all. And it runs it quite well. You, in a minute, you're going to see me run some demos. Um, but it can't do AGA. AGA is a little bit too much for it. There we go. So you can see that's, that's working. I don't want to just have this going on forever. So what I want to do is show you on a full screen. So, so you can take this around... And you know you can. I, I have this pl uh, connected. Um, is this connected? That's a good point. I have this connected the the network because it's actually got Wi-Fi built in. I have it so it's, it can be connected to my local LAN at home. Um, but I also can connect it to my mobile phone. I've got a funny feeling it might be connected to my phone. Um, but yeah, so uh, it can do both. Um, in fact, let me just have a quick look and see if it is actually connected to the. Internet at the moment oh no that's okay so it's going through my land at the moment so you can see it's it's all working fine um let's load up into explore i am going to do this on the big screen and but it, it I, I wanted to show that it does actually make actually quite a nice little laptop you can take around with you um let me go trouble is this display of my eyesight don't aren't really good bedfellows Here we go. Yeah, yeah, so it works really nicely. Um, let it finish loading it. Remember, this is coming over the Wi-Fi. There we go. See, it's still nice and smooth. And it, and it, anyway, it's OWB. It works on other sites as well. So, yeah, that, that's pretty cool. So, um, what I'm going to do now, I can just show you me doing this. Now, what I'm going to use, I'm going to use this keyboard, which is a wife uh, a wireless keyboard. And this little mouse okay I mean I think it cost me about a tenner and I'm gonna get this and I'm gonna plug this into here I'll put it in the right way it might help okay now that should be yep there you go that's connected and so is the keyboard now next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this I'm gonna turn I'm gonna put the TV on now 
which means I'll probably have to stop this video, but I'll, I'll try it and then I'll, I'll, I'll show you the process and then I'll have to stop and restart it while I sort everything out and get the camera moved. But so if I put that in the side in, in there, nothing's gonna happen at the moment because I have to reboot. And then I've got an audio cable here and I plug that into the output, okay? And now I do a control or control deal, or I just do a reset. Now let me see if it's turned on. There you go. So now if I pull this back a bit, you, I'm gonna have to move the, the um, yeah, I'm gonna have to um, move the camera, but you, you, you'll be able to see this boot. We'll, we'll see this boot. <laughs> I'm really gonna have to reposition this, aren't I? Right, now what it's done at the moment is, it's it's logged in, at, it's, it's got the same resolution as the um, the laptop display, see? So all I do now is I go into AROS, prefs, and then screen mode, and I'm gonna select 1920, okay? And we try, there we go, so it's now in 1920. So I'm gonna stop this, and then I'm gonna set the camera up and continue. Okay, so here we are. Got it on full screen now. Um, so let's have a look. So remember, this is the uh, Intel Atom-based Acer Aspire 1, which you can pick up for between 50 and 70 pounds, something like that. Um, but they still make a great little um, AROS machine. Um, okay, so um, now, again, this is because of the drivers, um, which are now available on the whenever you install it. They're just in, in the AROS distribution, so, which is obviously quite cool. Uh, okay, so let's uh, go. So we've got now we're running this at 1920 by 1020, sorry, uh, 1920 by 1080. Um, and so let's open up a few windows. Just yes, okay, so we've got, you know, directory opus, D80. Uh, open up something up here so we can see it. Uh, let's run a little video. So we can now, let me, let me just grab one of those videos so you can see them running. All right, let's um, let's get that one music one playing. Put that one there. Right, let's uh, just for fun. Let's keep the volume down a little bit. Right, so uh, let's open up another one. Okay, it's Babylon Five. Nice Babylon 5. Now these are, I mean, this one's about, uh, with DVD resolution, they're both DVD resolution, um, which I think is is pretty cool. Um, but let's see if we can uh, move this on a bit and keep them playing. And just, I just want to show you basically the stability. Let's open up Reflect. Yeah, let's go, okay. Now this is, um, this is an OpenGL. Okay, so, Basically, what it's doing is it's playing. So let's shrink it down actually because it's obviously. There we go. So it's got a, a, an OpenGL animation playing up here and a couple of videos playing. So let's close these down. And we'll close that down. And then we can make this full screen. Yeah. As I said, the um, the three D engine's not it's not the most powerful in the world, but it, but do you know what? It's it, it is usable now. There is a fair bit of software that's been actually uh, ported onto AROS for using 3D. Um, but imagine, imagine this with a 3D app with this, you know, um, with this kind of 3D power. I mean, even on the cheapest setup. Right. So what else have we got? Let's. Uh, oh, I tell you, what, we've done that. Something I quite like is the old Amiga animations. And let's load up. Um, I've got this animation tool here, and I'm going to go into my animations and view. Let's view. By name okay let's grab that one drop that into there press play there we go so there's an animation there we'll load up another one now obviously I could run this in the emulator if I wanted to uh, here's one I, I like from the old days this is one of the very first animations that came out which is absolutely brilliant um, and we'll do another one pop this down here and uh, where is it gone? Here we go. Dragon's Lair. Here we go. 
So yeah, play a lot of Amiga animations. Let's close them down. And now this makes a really nice, useful, you know, a really useful little um, tool. Um, so let's, for example, go to, I'm not, have I got any mods on here? Music, mods, yeah, here we go. Um, I, gee, I'm loath to just double to click on that. I do, oh, let's just do it. No, it's not, it's not got any default player set up, is it? I have actually got a player set up here. Let's do this. Here we go, there's um, Pinball Fantasy, and this is one of those, it's just a, a player in the system. So it'll play mod, mod files, okay. Let me go, let's get rid of that. It's quite nice though, actually, I love the way it fades out. Right, let's, and then what we'll do is, now again we can do this bounce. And of course you can do that, you know, you've got the scrolling screens with AROS, even with these massively high resolution displays. Okay, there is audio with that one, but it's kind of quiet. Uh, what else have we got in here? Because I've got quite a lot in here. Um, let's open up some demo. I remember doing this in the early days. Oh, I bounce, I've done that one. Yeah, GLXS works, um, but it's a little bit slow on here. It's not really ideal for this. Um, demos. Uh, demos. There's loads in here. Start some demos. These are the original ones that used to come out. They're actually really good. Um, let me close that, 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 that. Close that down. And this is a recent one that was done, um, which is which is a nice little um, OpenGL one. <laughs> it's, you know, it does. It's really good. And this and this is um, nice kind of performance. For the, the the GPU in this, the little. Um, 3D GPU in the A in the um, GMA 950s. You know it's good for this kind of stuff. It does it's amazing what you can do with it. And I've also got a game on here. Let me just load this one. This is um ah uh, it's a hurricane. It's a hurricane hurricane. I don't know. And I'm rubbish at games again, and I apologise for this. But this is one that's been ported. And this uses this uses um, OpenGL. It takes a little while to load, unfortunately. Um, but it's a side scroller. Um, well, I will let this load and let it play because um, a lot of people like this, and this has been ported to AWOS, and there's others been ported. There's lots of other games been ported. I've not got them all on here, but there is quite a lot of games on it. And of course, then you can run all the emulators as well. So let's uh, uh, start a new game. Go on, normal. Here we go. Yeah. Come on, let's get in there so I can do some shooting and make myself look stupid. Yeah, the smoke will make you jump higher. Great. Okay, so you've got a nice side scroll. Is it that button? Oh, that's the jump button. I've been looking for that. Ah, cock. Um, jump. Oh, Jesus. Oh, then you've got the spike. You kill. Oh, Christ. Um, you don't get many of them, though, look. Oh, what is that? Anyway, you get the point. It plays games. Does it quite well actually, considering it's only an atom. I, and I and this is why I, this is why I funded the whole development because it's even though it's an old chip now, it, you know you can pick these up for very little money, and they do make great little systems. So all right, let's now run, um, get that that. Um, now remember what I was saying about the emulators. Um, the atom really is is not very is, is not powerful enough for AGA. So if, don't think you can just run AGA demos and games. But what it, you know, be, I'm going to show you it running um, Amiga OS in a minute in a, in a RTG screen. But let me just do this again, just so you can see what it's like in here. Ah, uh, where's it gone? There it is. Oh, let's do a different one, shall we? Shrink that. So this is an old 1.3 demo. Um, when it gets there, did I insert it? There we go. <laughs> it's probably a slow start of this one. But I just want to show you that you can run these, and you could run it in full screen, as I'm going to show you with the um, uh, the workbench demo. I've picked a very slow starting screen, haven't I? God, here we go. 
And this is a really old demo, this is. But this is an old o OCS one. And you can see it runs nice and smooth. I, um, I'm not sure if I've got this in 60 frames a second. No, I don't think I have actually. Maybe, I may have it in 60, I, don't know, I can't remember now. Um, this actually runs reasonably smooth, and bear in mind it's an Atom again. Um, but, but, you know, I've got that running. But that doesn't mean I can't do anything else. There we go, let's... Ah, uh, uh, let's run a bit of Babylon 5. Oh, okay, so he's going to break up a little bit on that one. <laughs> but he's still doing it. He's still, you know, still clapping. Um, right, so let's... Uh, oh, I'll tell you what, there's our load vamp up and we'll chuck an animation in it. Just to show it, you know, it will, they will all coexist. There we go. Now, bear in mind, this animation is, is, <laughs> is, is really pushing it. Because bear in mind, don't forget this is this is this is only an atom, but it it's surprising what you can do with it. And of course, you you know normally you're not going to be doing all this. Let's uh, let's get the I really like this cat one. Uh, okay, so not so good. <laughs> you really are pushing the limits with this, but I wanted to show you so you can see it's you know it will work. Anyway, so that's that. That's a um, that's with Janus built in. Now I. You can actually run it in coherence mode, which basically means that the screens open, the programs open up on the Aeros screen, but I don't like that personally. It's just, I'm not a big fan of that. Okay, so let's run um, Amiga OS. Now, this is using Janus UAE. Now, at the moment, I've got it running in the window. Let us let this boot up. Okay, so there you go. Now, it's in a window. Um, and of course it's synchronized. Now I like, this is how I like to, do you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to sort these bloody windows. I don't like, I don't like personally, by default it goes, it can take the windows outside of display, but I don't particularly like it. I like, I like it to go and snap, so I'm just going to do that. That's better. So now I can move that and just shove it in the corner, right? It snaps it, right. So I've got this running, um, and you can see we've got, you know, usual windows. But what I might want to do is, uh, so I can run this up here. Run my applications. Okay, I can run AD Pro. Let's, for example, grab an image. Let's say I've got this Boeing robot. Let's advertise the comp competition. Not this competition, to be honest. It'd be nice if we all worked together a little bit more, but you know, can't always be had, can it? Here we go. And I'll, I'm going to make this a bit smaller. I'm going to scale this down. Let's scale it down 50% because it's quite a big image. So I can use all my old 68K applications. I don't play many games, um, as you probably can tell. Uh, let's just pop this into a screen here. But the performance on here is actually really good. So I can I can use all my applications with no problem at all. Um, Say, so for example, I want to go into TV Paint. Let's put it in, just get the right screen mode so it's in the same. There we go, it's in the same screen mode now. And then we can load. So I can, I, again, I can run these applications. Uh, actually, well, yeah, I tell you, let's do. Now I'm going to do something quite, um, quite intensive here. So I'm going to grab this image to give you an example of just how fast this little little machine is. And you can see it's moving that around, okay, in the window. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear the screen, and I'm going to use the brush, and I'm going to do a fill. And I'm going to get to the middle of the screen. I'm going to do this and fill it. And that was wrong. Hang on. That was wrong. Sorry. Uh, I need to fill. There we go. That's better. And we'll do that. There you go. So that's a nice... Uh, Nice little fill there, and of course, you know, then you can do the, if I want to kill, I can kill, let me kill that brush, go back into here and turn the, that off, and I could just go in and do the usual things I usually do. I mean, it's just, it's just brilliant, you can do, this, this is actually fantastic, especially the fact it's open, so, well, it's freely distributable now, which is really nice. Quit, 
Um, I can also go into perfect paint, but this is really good for my old applications. You know, that, that that's the bottom line. I mean, I, I don't don't get me wrong. I don't use the Amiga all the time, but there's a a lot of things you can do on the Amiga that you just can't do anywhere else. Um, and it's nice having these applications available. So if I go into volume now, I'm I'm accessing the drive from AROS as well. So I'm kind of using the you know the both both sides of access to each other's each other's files, which is really useful. There we go. And so if I scale that around, then I can move it around. Yeah, so I think you get a picture there. It actually runs really nicely. But what you might want to do, of course, is you may want to run this in full screen. So what I can do is I can go back up here, open up the uh, emulator, and I can stop it. And then I can go back into here, and I can switch it to full screen, and then restart it. There we go. Now. Now what you need to do is you need to save the settings and ideally to rerun the emulation again from fresh because you'll notice the cursor's not snapped. When you when you run it from fresh, they, they snap together. So it makes life a lot easier. You see I've got two cursors at the moment. There you go. That's a meager emulator, so let's flip back. So of course I've got now it's it's, it's hidden, you can't see it. Um but let's uh let's stop that emulator. So there you go. Um it can do quite a lot and it's and I think it's pretty impressive. I mean I you know Oh, I've still got I've still got that out there, look. Let's get rid of that, shall we? Oh I've got a few of these open, look. There you go. It's great, isn't it? And that's all on an Intel Atom chip. So um, there you go. Hope, hopefully you like that. All right, so here's another example of... Um, let's start this up. Here's another example of uh, how AROS can reclaim an old PC. Um, uh, this PC belonged to um, a very close friend of mine's mother who sadly passed away recently, and they were, they were cleaning bits and pieces out as you do um, and he said to me do you um, I've got this old PC which is like pretty old and um, are you interested and I said yeah, yeah I'll have a look um, and so basically it's got a 1.4 it's an old e-machine 730 and it's got a 1.5 gigahertz processor Pentium 4 which is pretty good um, 256 megabytes of RAM CD-ROM drive you know the whole the whole works uh, and I thought it'd make a good little AROS box. Now, it's, it, it, this is actually booting up. Um, I've installed the AROS software on here, and I was just going to give you a little bit of a, a, a view of what, what we can expect. Um, hopefully, you can see the display. Now, the the, the card itself has got um, it hasn't got a network card in it, um, but it's got a nice NVIDIA uh, graphics card. But it's only a 2D graphics card. Um, and the, although it's got sound on board, I'm going to show you just a little bit of a tip. If you go into uh, no to, um, System Dicks Tools, and there's a tool in here called PCI Tool. So if you if you get one of these old machines and just stick the uh, um, the latest Icarus boot CD-ROM into it, and just see if it starts up. And if it comes up, then you you know you're on something good. Now you'll notice on this. Let me just get that down. Uh, if I if I click on PCI tool and I can go through, let me see what we got here. So you can see it's got it says AC97. Now that can quite often be quite useful if it says that AC97 is one of the drivers that's available for AROS. But there are so many out there. Uh, what else have we got in here? No, this is not much on it. So, but that that's actually see now it says here Ether Express, but it's not actually got that on board. Uh, sadly, I, I went in. I tried to use the um, <coughs> in the audio setup, and I and I couldn't get that to work. So either the driver needs to be told, because sometimes you can just add add this this uh, vendor ID and details to that driver, so that maybe they can support it. But anyway, so um, but you can see, for example, like just how good this is. Um, if I run this now, there's obviously no sound. Um, which is sad. I mean, I'm sure the drivers could actually be updated to support this fairly easily, to be fair, because sometimes, as I said, it's just a case of it adding an entry. But you can see it works, and the graphics are really good, and 
uh, I, I, I was actually really impressed with this. And I know it got me thinking, well, you know what, I, I can, what can I do with this? So first thing I did now, first thing I did, I actually nicked, I didn't think I was going to be able to use this. So I nicked the hard drive out of it. It had like a um, 40 gigabyte hard drive. Because I'd set it all up, I thought I'd stick it in another machine, which you're going to see in a separate clip. And I thought that would be quite good. Well, what can I do? So I thought, well, what can I do with this? So I went out. And I bought a number of cards. So I bought this. Now, this is an Intel Pro 100 um, network card, PCI card, which you pick up for about a fiver. Okay, so I added one of them. Uh, I've got a few of these actually floating around, funny enough. I bought these a little while back. And these are Sound Blaster Live, um, uh, which is a really good sound card. I, I tend to, the, the AROS machines I build, I put one of them into it if, if it's not supported out of the box. And I then, oh, the card, I, I've, I've looked, and these, these um, sound cards, you can pick it up for about five, ten pounds. And I picked up one of these, which is um, an NVIDIA uh, um, 6200 card. Now, it's important, this, you have to check on the motherboard what's locked in. This is an, um, an AGP card, okay? So as you can see, it's working with the built-in card, and, and the CD-ROM drive actually works. In fact, let me just show you that. Let me just put a CD in here. So pretty much, and all, all I'm trying to show here is what you can do with resurrected hardware. Okay, so let's let this come up. It's been a bit, oh, that's a bit noisy, isn't it? Ooh. Open it up, and you can see my data in there. So you can see that's all in there. In fact, I could probably open one of these up. There you go. So it's reading the data off the CD, which is good. So you've got the basis there of a nice little 1.5 gigahertz AROS machine. Right, so I'm going to stop recording, then I'm going to I'm going to plug these extra cards in, and then you can see. Oh, let me just just I want to show you just how quick this thing is, even even with just this. You see, it works really nicely, and AROS performs beautifully on this. Um, we got so we got a paint package. I mean, it's just absolutely brilliant. Okay. Anyway, let's, let's get out of this. I'm now going to put these cards in and I'll show you what it's like with the extra cards. Okay, I've updated it. I've put those three boards in, which I think in total cost me about 20 quid, something like that. Um, I just, uh, oh, see what it see boosts like. So now this has got a 6200 um, uh, graphics card. Um, it's got a 16-bit sound card, which it, uh, if the drivers were updated, it would have it um, on board, I think. Um, the other machine you're going to see has actually got it on board, so I don't need the, the sound card. I mean, it's just a case of reusing old hardware. Okay, so there you go. So that's booting. Now I'm going to move the... Um, I'm just going to move the... Stop this. I'm going to move the camera. Okay, so let's have a look and see what, what, see what she performs like. So, remember what I said, it's a 1.5 gigahertz Intel Pentium 4 with originally 256 megabytes of RAM, but I put two more sticks in, so it's got 750. But it hardly uses any RAM, eh, Ross? So actually, I probably didn't need that. Um, I actually swapped out the 40 gig drive. I put the, the, the drive from there into my other machine, and I put in um, a solid state drive, uh, one of the compact flash drives. Uh, that, what that cost me? Eight quid. Um, the three pound for the card and about five, uh, to five to ten pound for the um, compact flash. But I didn't need to because I had a drive in it. So it's just me swapping stuff around. But yeah, anyway, so uh, let, let's uh, get on with this. Right, so um, the video, obviously. Let's go to videos. And this will the sound as well. There you go. So it's quite nice. You can go full screen. Yeah, there you go. So she can, you can play video. Plays really nicely actually, um, and, and again graphic. Well, I showed you the graphics before, didn't I? So you don't really need to see that. But what, what now? What you probably might want to see is see what you can do now. It's got a 3D graphics card in it. Oh, I will tell you what. Let's show you the internet first. So we'll open up um, OWB. Here we go. And now again, this was going to go and skip. Is it really important to remember that? Um, I've actually got the link now. Look. 
And this actually works really quick. Now, because of the network card, it's doing like, I think it was doing like 400, 500 kilobytes a second. So that's now loaded. And you can see how smooth this is. Okay, I mean, it's just, it's just AROS. It's just such an efficient system because it's based on the way the Amiga was. Um, and nice smooth fonts, you know, it's just really, really nice. Let's show you a, a, a modern, more modern, well, not that there, it's not a modern site, but let's open up BBC. BBC's a bit of a test. Nowadays, they don't even have an old, old machine friendly site to run to. This is a little bit more in intensive. This might take a, oh, yeah, continue. Yeah, continue. Okay, so there you go. Uh, it's, it, there's a lot in here, so it's still downloading. But you can see it's, you know, it's it's working, it's there. And and it's only got like a 1.5 gigahertz process, I forget. So, that, oh, that, well, that's loaded now, look. There we go, so we scroll down. Oh, it's still loading some of it. But of course, it's building these pages, obviously. But yeah, I mean, it's, you know, I think it's great. So that's that's the internet. Oh, and if you want to... I like to go on to here. I'm just going to um, oh, dis oh, disable it. Well, look, internet works. That's because I put an Intel Pro graphics card for a fiver. Sound cost me, I think, a fiver. Now, this is where, let's go to the graphics. This is going to be the interesting bit. So, right, let's load up a couple of demos first of all. So, let's load up a, a Mesa demo. Um, let's say the teapot. And let's do this. So, if I shove this and I go full screen, uh, you can see how smooth that is. Let's just let it come in yeah how nice is that I'm building up the tension here so uh, let's find another one I've got here which is uh, reflect we need to get rid of some of these might be our run two at the same time let's have a let's have a look yeah because it keeps popping that up let's put another one up here there you go so running two at the same time okay let me close that down See if that's going to go. Yeah, I know, I know. Let me minimise this. It likes to take, and I usually do them with um, greater than nil. In fact, if you if you want to run these demos, let's do them again just for fun. So now I, I want to show you the um, the GPU here. Now it, it's a very very old GPU, but it's still good. I mean, I put that there. We'll open teapot. Let's. If I put greater than nil, basically it's no output except for that one does. How strange. Let's close that. Right. So what I want to do is, now this is just fun. It might break, but I want you to see just how good this is. Now it's obviously starting to slow down a little bit. As you, yeah, as you can see. So it's doing two, two open GL sessions. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so might be a bit out of sync the audio though yeah <laughs> but hey <laughs> look you know so i can get uh, let's let's close let's what are we you've seen that one already let's put this up here bring it to the front make it full screen how smooth is that that's because opengl now with opengl let's get more interesting because i'm kind of teasing this a little bit let's do a little opengl demo yeah I'm building up to the, the big punch. Okay, so let's get rid of that. And then we're going to demos. Uh, I'll show you the demos, haven't I? Let's go into the first game. Yes, I'm going to show you that in a second. Don't worry. I said Foo Billiard. Right, so this is a... Um, oh, yeah, I should be getting on the mobile, shouldn't I? 3D game. Okay. Uh, let's... Uh, now we can make this... I can actually make this full screen. So if I go to options, display, resolution, 10 to Now this monitor is really old as well, but of course this monitor is working fine, you know, so I, I'm, re I'm really impressed with it. Okay, so we got this, turn this around, smack. There you go, so there's a bit of 3D games. Uh, now let's find the interesting one. This is the, this is the, this is the kiddie. So now this is a, a um, using the OpenGL. Now this is a very old graphics card, so a lot of advanced functions aren't in it. But it's still now you've probably seen this for I am rubbish at these games. 
So, you know, don't laugh too much. All right, let's see if a fire has got a bit of light in it. Now, I put, remember I put that compact flash card in there, which make, obviously makes it load a lot quicker. Although, to be honest, the old one was actually pretty efficient anyway, so. Okay, as, I, as, you, as I've stuck it in my other machine, there we go, so. Can you see this all right? Oh, let's see if I can, I'll go round and. Oh, where am I? Let's have a look up there. So anyway, you, you, you've got this, you've got a great 3D engine in AROS. Um, and, and with this, I mean, look, this, are, this are, I, I don't think any of the other next gen platforms are gonna keep up with this. I mean, this, and this is a cheap ass thing. I mean, you know, I just found it in a, was gonna go in a skip. I mean, it seems such a shame. Um, and I thought, you know, it's just nice to, to reuse quad this machine. Damage in 10 seconds. Yeah, quad damage in 10 seconds. Let's shoot something. Oh, oh, oh they're funny. Anyway, uh, what we can do is let's have a look at something else. Let's try bot match, see if I've got something. Let's find another site. What we got here? Load up another one. Here we go. And it runs really well. And you can see it. You can see it. But actually, to be fair, this is running at uh, 18 frames per second. So let's um, edit in. Here we go. Let's try it now. That's a 10. It's running at 1080p. I think. Oh, I could be wrong here. Um, no, that's not what I want. Campaign options. Here we go. Display resolution. Oh no, it's running at 800 or 600. Okay. Let's try dropping that down then. Campaign. Oh, I don't want to campaign, do I? Bot match. Start match. Capture. I know, oh, you keep telling me about that. Okay. So yeah, it's playable. You know, it's nice and playable. Um, but you know, it, it's it's a, it's a very old graphics card. Now the problem you obviously have is I can't put PCI. Now if you've got if you've got an old motherboard with um, PCI slots or PCI Express slots, I mean, sorry, uh, you're going to get you're going to see in the next video where I have got PCI slots and the difference it makes. Now this is running at 31, 35 frames a second. And it runs about 20, 25 in 800 per 600, but it, it, it's running, that's the key thing. The engine can cope with it. There you go. So all in all, for basically out of a skip, um, you've got a nice little computer. And if you add, you know, as I, as I said, if you add in a couple of components, you've got a full blown AWOS machine, which, are, you know, and again, this will, this will, this will run the Amiga emulators. There's another video showing my two other machines that have got my emulators on. But this one will run slight, probably slightly faster than the uh, Acer Aspire. And you'll see how fast that is running. I haven't transferred anything onto this because I've only got 4 gig drive. But there you go. Anyway, so I um, hope that was informative. Okay, so here's a third example. Um, this is just a box that I built um, with some bits. Um, I had it in the loft. Um, it's got an AMD... <clears throat> two and a half gigahertz AMD, forget which one it is now, dual, one of the old dual cores. Um, it's got a couple of gig stick RAM. Um, and I also had um, an old, I had an old, um, let me show you this card actually. I had an old uh, GTX 780, no sorry, 7800 it was called in the old days. And this is a really ancient GPU. Um, let me disconnect that. Um, and it's a really ancient old GPU. Um, a bunny it works. You're going to see it works surprisingly well. Um, and so that's going to be my third system in this uh, this uh, AROS back from the dead machines demo. Um, so you'll notice I've been messing around with that. I had to reseal the the um, heat sink over the top of uh, the regulators um, but yeah so uh, what else we got here um, it's although it had a network card in it, it's not supported in the drivers aren't supported but having said that it has got HD it's got AC 97 support on the um, motherboard so you notice there's no, gra no sound no sound card needed 
Um, I have also got uh, an IDE connected um, uh, 40 gig drive, which actually came out of that other machine, um, which I'm using here. And uh, this is actually the one I use most of all because it's got the faster processor. Um, but funny enough, it hasn't got the <clears throat> the DVD ROM. I'm waiting for a cable to come to connect the DVD and the CD-ROM drive. Um, then I can have that working as well. Um, but yeah, it's a great little machine. Um, and so I'll, I'll shut up and then um, I'll let you see what this runs like. Okay, so let's um, let's have a quick run through this. So it's a 2.5 gigahertz AMD. Uh, dual core with uh, two gig of RAM. Obviously, AVOS at the moment is only using one core, but um, as you may well know, there's uh, multi cores work is progressing well. So there'll be more news on that later. Um, but anyway, so but I've also got in here a, a GTX. I think it's called GTX, but it's a 7800 series. Don't confuse that with 78 780 series. This is a 7800 series, which is a really old card you can get on eBay for peanuts, basically 10, 15 pounds. So if you've got an old computer chuck one in. Um, however the AVOS drivers on um, the OpenGL stuff will support up to the GTX 400 series so you can put a 460, 480 etc, 280 that kind of thing in there which can be really good performance. I just happen to have this in the loft so let's have a look at this game now. Now this is running 800 or 600 about 20 frames a second on that 62, 620 Nvidia card um, and I'm now running 1920 by 1024 so Let's uh, let's see what this is going to be like, shall we? Uh, okay. Now, keep an eye on the frame FPS. I'll I'll let you know what it's doing, but it's in the bottom right-hand corner. I'm going to get killed pretty quick, so I've got hopefully got the bots as low as possible because I'm not very good at this. So as you can see, I'm getting 60 60 frames a second. Let's jump down here. Let's. I've got a funny feeling this guy's around here. Where is he? Uh, oh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm really am rubbish. I've actually turned off all the all, as many bots as possible, but I, I really want you just to see the 3D. Yeah. Should we change the world to another one? Uh, let's pick another Please one. Happy. Yeah, I know. One damage in ten cool. Uh, I've seen that one. Uh, let, let's go to that one. But it can, you know, AWOS is capable of some fantastic OpenGL and, you know, 3D graphics. Um, and there's quite a few games that have been ported. Um, which And, you know, really shows how good this uh, this this platform is. Anyway, so you, you, get, the, you get the gist of this, okay? Uh, let's have a look. Let's just wait until I shoot that. Probably not a lot. I don't know the way his hand moves. There's loads of settings in here. You can improve the settings on this. Um... Anyway, let's quit out of that. I will show you the um, setting for that, actually. Uh, open Geo. Well, I'll tell you what, well, you've, you've seen that. Let's open up a couple of others. Uh, Chromium. I like Chromium. If I was going to play a game, I quite like this. Uh, let's click in there. Hang on. Uh, again, I'm actually better at this, too, believe it or not. It's probably one of the few games I'm actually not too bad at. Reminds me of um, Space Invaders. <laughs> Again, I'm not going to hide the fact that I am actually rubbish. Anyway, there you go. Let's uh, let's quit out of that. Um, and of course, then there's, for example, you can play billiards. Oh, sorry, pool. Now this one, this one's quite good because you can just set this and then put the display. Again, because of the power of this GPU in here. I can go up to 1920. You can go higher. I mean, if you know, if your system's capable of higher, you now you also support it. I don't, actually, I'm not sure if it's a little, if you can go 4K. I've never tried AWOS in 4K. But anyway, so there you go. So there's a, you know, got that. <laughs> yeah, let's get out of here. Um, what else have we got? Um, I showed you the GT um, Hurricane on here. That's not a particularly heavy duty game, to be fair. Let's try running some more demos. So you got this one again. This one runs really nice, but this one runs nice on the. Um, it runs really nice on the uh, Atom as well, so it's no big deal. But uh, that looks really nice. Uh, okay, so uh, what else? Oh, and now of course you, then you come up into these. Now uh, I'm gonna type in here. I'm gonna put the greater than nil, so hopefully I won't get. Right, so this one, that one over there. And then we'll run another one here. OK, 
Okay, right, so I'm going to run a couple of these are running at quite silly speeds, obviously. Let me close that one down because what I want to do is I want to run something else while I'm out. Because I tried to do this on the um, the other one, and of course it was struggling, as you'd expect. Ah, uh, let's see videos. Let's get that. Okay, so let's run Josh. There we go. Yeah, we've run a couple of these. Yeah. So you can see a much, much better performance, and that's still a really cheap card. But it's ridiculously cheap, to be fair. Right, so let's get on to something different now. So, okay, let's try something um, a little bit different. Um, right, so we've got this nice 3D, um, sorry, this 2D paint break. It actually uses um, OpenGL to run this. Um, which is quite nice. It's got a bit of a weird system for the. Um, uh, no, go on. There we go. My word, supposed to grab a picture. Uh, okay. Okay. But you, you know, you, it's, it's, it actually. It's, I like this. It's quite a nice little program. This. That's worth having a look at. Load paint. Right, but let's get to, back to the Amiga side of things again. Um, Right, so uh, let's run. Um, okay, this is my standard. Now, th this th I played this earlier. Um, now, you won't see an awful lot of difference in performance on this, actually. In fact, it's not really worth showing it on because I mean, it, it does run beautifully. Um, uh, let's not. Well, I want to show you something a bit more, something a bit more in depth. So, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to show you uh, Amiga OS. Now this is running a 1280 by 720 full screen display. If you remember, I was playing around with this earlier on. Okay, you might notice there's an icon up there. So yeah, it's, it's standard Amiga stuff. You can carry on playing, but of course everything's a lot faster now. Um, if I do that same old thing I did earlier, boing ball. Actually, that's the. Okay, let's load a different one then. Let's get the uh, OS4 robot, and you can see it's. Running quicker, obviously, as it would. Click here and here, and then stick that on display. There you go. That runs really nice. So, of course, you've got that, but you've got obviously much, much better performance. Um, I think I've actually got. Um, I wonder if oh, I really should have. This is actually annoying. I should have checked first. I've got a feeling. Yes, I have in here. I can show you how fast it's running. Um, is this info? Here we go. Now, the, excuse the display because I've not got it set up for PAL, but I just want to show you the speed. You tend to want to run these in their own own display, but not jumping from UAE graphics. So now you can see there, hopefully, um, 449 MIPS and 514 MFLOPS. Nothing touches that, and it's 814 times faster than an A600. So it's about five times faster than a vampire. It, ma it makes you think, doesn't it? Um, and this is just from scrap, okay? Bear that in mind. So that's on a, an old, probably five, six-year-old AMD dual-core chip running at two and a half gigahertz. Um, that, that really should um, hopefully uh, open some eyes up on that. But anyway, let's. But then you can do stuff like this. You can run Shapeshifter. There you go, Mac OS. Within. Yeah. yeah run on AROS. Okay. There's AROS. Mac OS. Run it on here. When he gets there. And it, and it thinks it's an 040 and it's running. It, it actually runs quite. I haven't got any. Well, it's running the same speed as it would, you know, equivalent speed machine. Um, I haven't got any software on it, on it yet, so I can't really give much of a demonstration. But I have got on here, for example, a QuickTime player. I don't want to upgrade. Okay, let's open up. Let's open up. Oh, yeah, you have one button on there, don't you? Oh, I don't want that. No. Open movie. Here we go. 
in here I have a sample movie oh, let's press play there you go so yeah and, and of course it works the audio works um, I've actually got a game this is the only one I could find because a lot of them want 256 colours <laughs> of course it doesn't work there we go let's send him that way oh god oh. it's probably running too fast if anything but now this is this is running really really fast um, it's treating as an 040 but bearing in mind you've got like 500 you know MIPS I mean and and the speed of the um, the Mac OS because it's the, as far as it's concerned it's got um, about have I got in here I don't like Mac OS I've got to be honest about this computer oh here we go Macintosh see it tells you more on the new version of this doesn't tell you much on here anyway let's shut that down so you can see Mac OS playing on it but then when you've got this kind of power in the emulation you know you can do so much there we go let's get back into here there we go. So um, yeah, uh, it works really nice. I, 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 did I show you this? Probably didn't. Okay. Ah, let's, I've seen you've seen that many times. What I'll do is I shut that down now. So we'll just get that and then just close that down, and we're back into AROS again. There you go. Um, let's end. This is a bit of sound there. But it's actually quite fairly quiet on that. Again, remember this is this is a 1920 display you're moving up and down here. Um, it's quite funny because I had to, I had to talk someone into doing this demo because well you know we don't really. Well, if I had to talk them into doing the the screen dragging, no, do the screen dragging because it's iconic. And the boing ball, I've got Ian to do that for me based on an existing version, but added sound and so I made it full screen. There you go. Right, so over to some conclusions, I think. Okay, so I hope you found that interesting. Um, so I'm going to sum up and then give some thoughts. Uh, you may not want to continue with this, it's up to you. Uh, I may upset some people, I hope I don't. Um, these are just my thoughts based on experience. So Ross, to my mind, it's been this little jewel that's been sitting there, been developed for many, many years by a number of passionate people. And it's never really been used as it could be. It's open source, for one thing. I don't understand this. It's completely open source. Anyone can use it. You can modify it. Uh, you can put the code. Hopefully, you put the code back into the code base to make improvements to the to the source code. It's on a number of platforms. It's on x86. It's on PowerPC. It's on ARM. It's on 68K. 68K and x86 are probably the two best platforms. Um, had the most work. Um, work continues. Um, the PPC and the ARM side uh, need a little bit of development work, let's put it that way. But the potential is enormous if people would get behind it. Now, um, hopefully you've seen that you, for, for very little money you can build a great little AROS machine. And, and as far as a, as a 68K Amiga emulator, I mean, it, it is absolutely amazing. We've got the um, Vampire coming out, which is a really amazing little card. Um, but if you actually look at it, for the performance, cost, etc., etc., an AROS machine. I mean, you've seen in part one of the video clips it just annihilates it, and that was on a on an old piece of kit. People have to get over this whole emulation business. Don't think of it as emulation. Think of it of what it really is: a virtual machine. Okay, UAE is just basically a virtual machine. That's that's all it is. And but people have put emulation in there, and they they've got a negative on it. Even if you've got Amiga OS, um, the Amiga OS 4.1, 4. they have some fine technology in there. Um, Petunia, I think it's called. Um, it's still emulation, you know, and it's um, so all of these technologies are going to emulate. Now, the Vampire is slightly different because it's FPGA, it's actually it's a programmable chip, so it's kind of halfway between new hardware, etc. And it, and, and it is wonderful, I think it's amazing what they've done. Um, but I, I, as I've shown with these little Raspberry Pis, you know, uh, you can build one of these for 40, 50 pounds um, and get an amazing experience. Now, but it, you know, the, the emulation on here, let's call it Virtual Amiga on here, can't compete with an x86 processor, even on a cheap, you know, the, the third video you saw was a two and a half gigahertz. 
it, it was, I mean, it was, well, it was, I mean, the floating point was off the chart, it was like 550 M flops. The uh, MIPS were, oh, I don't know, about two or three times the amount. I mean, it was cr crazy performance. Can emulate the Macintosh. I mean, likewise, you could probably do on this. I've actually tried it, but anyway. Um, so, AWOS is a great platform. Um, I think it should be uh, used more. Um, I think that it has the potential to bring people together. I, I'll give you an example. The 68K development has stopped. Okay? But the 68K on AWOS is ongoing. There is potential there for the community to evolve the 68k side of things. For example, for Vampire now, if Vampire does offer a 68k, which I hope they do, um, there is a performance in the Vampire to run it. Um, it will give you a great platform for development. But the best thing about it is that you'll then be developing AROS. Now that code could be shared with the x86 branch and the ARM branch, etc. There's a, there is a, a synergy between the, the code in between the platforms. Obviously there's differences. But basically what we have is an amazing resource code base that's there, works, is as stable as any of the other platforms, and is, to my mind, this is where I'd probably upset people, honestly believe AROS is the most advanced Amiga operating system out there. It has obviously very powerful x86 code base, it can run on all those chips, it can run multi uh, on x86, 68k, PPC, ARM. It has an amazing 3D engine based on Gallium and Nouveau. Work is continuing on the 3D engine. And I don't think any other platforms can touch it for 3D. Um, this is um, this is the the jewel for AROS as well. Um, but there's more stuff coming. Um, it, in the existing code base, the stability has been massively increased. I'm not saying it's perfect, but it is massively increased. But there's also SMP coming. Now, my interest, I, I I'm not I'm going to do like I did before. I'm not going to tell you what I'm going to be supporting. But you can bet, you've only got to look at my history to see what I've done in the past, and I'm a hardware guy. So, SMP is, as you can see, you can go and play with it now, it works. And I will do a video about SMP, which is going to enable AROS to run on multiple cores. Now, I'm looking at Ryzen, I've, there's already a couple of videos out there running on 12 core Ryzen's. You start getting into that area, you've got proper performance, and bearing how efficient AROS is. The other thing is graphics. Now at the moment, the AROS uh, engine supports NVIDIA up to um, uh, the 400 series GPUs. Um, the Nouveau technology uh, will, I believe, go up higher to 600, but unfortunately at the moment we haven't got anyone to port the, the updated Nouveau drivers. Sadly, this is, I'll give you the reason for this, Christoph did a ton of work, and so did Nick and Nick Andrews. Did a ton of work on getting this on there, and has I think he's just lost, lost, lost interest. Well, he has lost interest, um, mainly because people out there expect everything for free. Um, I'm not asking you to pay for AROS, but you know you could do like I'm doing. I want the features. Some of you, there's some, there's some great developers out there. And AROS is such a great platform. If you're if you like retro, AROS is the platform for you. Okay, um, it, it it is it is an absolutely amazing platform. It's open source. You can go in, you can tweak it, you can join the community, you can bring in some expertise. We do need fresh blood. We desperately need fresh blood. We have a number of developers that work hard, but we do need fresh blood. We do need some more drivers. Now, I'm on my part. I'm not a hub. A hardware device driver guy can't, can't do that all I can do is in my own way fund now I'm not I'm not loaded <laughs> I fund with kindness and encouragement and the odd bits of pieces that people need um, and it works well and uh, so if you're interested if you're a Linux device driver 
software coder, get in touch. Um, we really could do with some more work. And th there's a number of areas that we that I want to see improved. Um, but I do think it's it's. I honestly think it's the platform for the Amiga's future. Um, we we are not limited by s slow CPUs. Um, they cost our, our our systems cost peanuts. Um, and you know I like the idea of this whole transition. We have a transition path between 68k. Now you can come in with a little Raspberry Pi. Now I did a, a video of Raspberry Pi. And is it I heard tagline? Is it the best Amiga ever? Uh, well, no, no, of course it's not because these things are beautiful. But it was really good performance. And then there's lots of comments that were made about, oh well, this board's fast. Of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there's another one out called the Tinkerboard. Um, which will allow you to run all that 68k software. But of course, if you've got an AWOS machine running on a, an x86 motherboard, so, I mean, mine, the one in this video is 2.5 gigahertz on a fairly old, archaic old um, um, AMD processor. That running on, you know, one of the new Ryzen's, um, SMP, you know, with multi core. Jesus, I mean, how fast is this going to be? And it isn't as far away as you think. So, um, and yeah, this board, Pi, getting people excited. They can come in ex and play with 68K. It's great fun developing and working on 68K. The software out there is amazing, but we want new software. So you start people off on the 68K. Vampire is really encouraging people to join in. The Vampire users have actually got a forward plan. Forward plan. They've also, and I'm not privy to it, but they've got a forward path now because they've got a 68K. If you get onto that platform and you're in the AWOS area, you're already in the development environment, etc., etc., you could then move, you can move yourself onto the x86. If you're inspired, maybe um, do help us with the ARM um, implementation, um, which would be fantastic because I think actually ARM is going to be really important. I always have done. But, that, that, well, people, I'm. Um, it's been people know I'm mad about the Amigas, but a, a, a little bit, a tiny little bit of history and the reason why. In the end of the nineties, where um, late nineties, when the Amiga was going down, I uh, I was selling the product called Siamese System. I'd already done the Checkmate fifteen hundred and stuff like that, and we was doing Siamese System, and we had a with Mick Tinker, we were going to build this PCI Amiga card that would it was a sixty eight forty stick it into a gateway, the gateway. Um, PCs and that was going to then allow us to run Amiga software on Windows and we already did this with Siamese system but you needed to plug an Amiga into it so this was going to be so you didn't need to plug an Amiga into it and you had your processor and then port the long term plan was to port to x86 because at that point I knew that x86 was going to win I think everyone did um, I didn't agree with, I'll be honest I didn't agree with Power PC Okay, it was the easy route. Okay, I'm not belittling people's work. They've done some amazing things, and people will get upset about this. But it, it was the easy route, and it looked a good route. Um, but it was the x86 was always going to win. It's it's not it's 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 not an elegant chip. It's not an elegant architecture. It's brute force. So that's where I was now. So of course I disappeared, and I came back, and I found Aros, which is already on x86. So of course. For me, it was going to be falling in love with it. So that's my my thing with it. Uh, that's why I believe in AROS, and that's why I will continue to support it. Um, so if, if you see this and you're thinking, "Wow, that looks good," you know, they'll um, if you can um, subscribe to the channel, click the alarm. I'm going to be doing more videos, and um, There'll be more more to, to see. Um, I'm gonna, the next thing I'm probably going to do at some point is um, build a very cheap board. And I've got I can I can right now I can build a complete PC, all brand new parts, four gigahertz, for about 130 140 pounds, and that's a, a kick ass computer. Um, and I'm I'm going to build that. I'm gonna Put parts this out so people can build it themselves. I'm going to do the tests on AROS, and you'll see just how fast AROS and 68K can run. <clears throat> so do subscribe and hit that alarm. 
Um, and hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully it was informative. Maybe watch some of the other videos. Um, but better still, just you know, get yourself involved in the Amiga. And if you can, if you're if a programmer, please get in touch with me. If you just want a bit of fun, you know, if you like, to, you know, we don't get to do this stuff normally. Um, I mean, I'm a, I'm a programmer, but I'm not a driver person. So I'm not a systems person, so I'm a bit higher level than that. Well, high level, so it makes it sound better. No, I do document management stuff, that kind of thing. So it's not low level. Um, but yeah, so uh, if you can, if you want to come along, join in. Okay, that's it. Thanks so much, and hope to see you soon. Bye.